Hi guys, welcome to the next lecture of this series. I'm going to talk about graph transformations today. What is graph transformation? As the name suggests, the process by which an existing graph or a graphed equation is modified or produced as a variation of the preceding graph. That's what is graph transformation. It's just like modification of an algebraic equation for that matter. Now, there could be different ways in which you transform a graph. Graphs are at times translated. We call it translation of any graph or moved about the xy plane. So what you can do at times, you can stretch the graph. So sometimes the graphs are stretched. Sometimes the graphs are rotated. Sometimes they can be inverted. Or you can have some combinations of all these things. Or combination of these. Let's talk about translating a graph vertically first. And then we'll talk about horizontally. What happens when a graph is translated vertically? Vertically? Why vertically? What's happening here? Vertically means that, see, when you look at the coordinate axis, you have x-axis, you have y-axis. That's what the Cartesian plane is all about, right? The y-axis is the vertical. So vertically, the word vertically is coming from y-axis. That means we are looking at the change in y. So when there's a change in y, say, for example, we are changing y, we are increasing or we are making it vertically up by one unit. That's a vertical translation. Earlier, essentially, this means that fx was equal to y. Now you have a new function. Let's call it f star. f star of x is equal to y plus 1. Or in other words, that this new function is basically fx plus 1. That's also something that you can call it, right? So f could be any function here, okay? f could be any function. It could be linear. It could be quadratic. It could be any function. But a vertical translation means that we are adding or subtracting something from y or f of x. For example, let me take the function as a simple linear function, fx equals to x or y equals to x, the graph of, you know, uh, what should come to your mind is the graph of y equals to x. What we are doing is we're just extending this analysis. Now I'm looking at a vertical translation wherein I'm uh, moving it up by one unit. That means the new function will be f star x equals to y plus one. Y plus one, essentially, if my graph was fx equals to x, then y plus one means I'm looking at x plus one. So the new graph is essentially x plus one. Let's now picture it on the Cartesian plane. What will it look like? This, my friends, what you can see here is the graph of y equals to x or f of x equals to x, okay? That's the initial function we started off with. Now I'm saying that we're translating it, we're moving it up by one unit. So what's gonna happen? Now your new function f star is actually f plus one. So, which means that when your input is x, the value instead of just x, it is x plus one. So when the input is zero. What I get output as one. When the input is one, what do I get as an output? I get two. When the input is two, I get the output as three. When the input is three, I get four. Similarly, you know, I'll get five when the input is four, six, seven. I'm going to get that. When the input is minus one, when the input is minus one, I'm going to get zero. So, this is the point. Here it will inter intersect the x-axis at minus one. 
When the input is minus two, I'm going to get minus one. When the input is minus three, I'm going to get minus two, so on and so forth. So if now you join all these points, you will see that you have a graph which is exactly like the previous graph except for the fact that it's up by one unit throughout. It's up by one unit throughout. So that it's a vertical up. It's a vertical shift in this graph, okay? It's up by one unit throughout. This, my friends, is the graph of you call it F star or you call it a new graph of F, which is equal to X plus one. Or in other words, Y is equal to X plus one in this graph. That's what is a vertical translation of a graph. To understand the concept better, let's now take another function. Y is just linear. As I said, it could be any function, okay? You can translate any, any function. So I'm going to take the next function as x squared. Let's take fx equals to x squared. Now, my new function is, again, I'm keeping the concept to be the same. We are making a vertical change by one unit. So the new function is fx plus one. That means the new function is x squared plus one. Our new function is x squared plus one. Let's see what are the values to the function we will get and how it's different from x squared. So I'm going to take some inputs and let's figure out certain outputs. So if my input is minus two, x squared gives me four, x squared plus one gives me five. If the input is minus one, x squared gives me one, x squared plus one gives me two. If the input is zero, x squared gives me zero, but x squared plus one gives me one. Input one, x squared one, x squared plus one gives me two. Input two, x squared four, x squared plus one gives me five. Which means on the graph, it will look like x squared is simple parabola. We've just done that in the previous lecture. So this, my friend, is the graph for y equals to x squared. Now let's talk about the other graph, which is x squared plus one. So what's happening when x is zero, y is one. So here it is. When x is one, y is two. When x is minus one, y again is two. When x is two, y is five. Instead of four, this time it is five. So it's gonna be somewhere up here. When x is minus when x is minus two, again, the new function gives me the value five. So you have a parabola and there's a vertical shift here. That's what is your vertical translation or translating the graph vertically. It's gonna be something of this sort moving up, up like this. To be more precise, this is what the two graphs will look like taking help of a software. I could figure out it better. This is the graph of x square and the one which is vertically up, as you can see, is the graph of x square plus one, which is what I also created using my hands. Well, this is what is vertical translation. So what is happening here? Your function was fx, now fx plus L is the output that you will get. This means that there is a vertical shift. Vertical shift by L units, if I've taken L here, okay? If it's two units, two units, uh, five units, 10 units, whatever number of units, okay? Now let's talk about horizontal translation. So horizontal, as the word horizontal comes in here, that means there has to be a change in x. 
when you change x, you get a horizontal translation, which means that what we are actually doing, we are changing, we are making a change in the input itself. If we make a change by one unit, so your input was x, output was y. Now what's happening? Your input is x plus one and your output is y. So that's what is a horizontal translation. So your function f x y changes to f x plus one comma y. Or in other words, if I wanted to relate input x, output y. So this will give you x plus one, giving you y. So your new function is f star and f star and f are definitely related to each other this time as well. Mm -hmm. How are they related? So fx suppose is a linear function x plus five. Then f star will be f of x plus one, which means it's x plus one plus five. That means it is x plus six. Right. In other words, if you see that you can reach from f star, also you can reach fx. If you take the input instead of x plus one, if you take the input in, instead of x, if you take the input x minus one, if you take the input as x minus one, you will actually get x minus one plus six, or in other words, x minus x plus five, which is what is your fx. So this time also fx and f star are related to each other. Let me now show it to you what the change looks like on a graph. So this kind of a change will look like something of this sort. So this function that you see here, this graph that you see here, which is cutting minus five, five, this is the graph of x plus five. So when x is zero, y is five. When, when y is zero, x is minus five. Or when x is minus five, y is zero. This, my friends, is the graph of x plus six. Y equals to x plus six. So hence, when x is zero, it cuts here at six. When y, x is, when, when y is zero, when y is zero, x is minus six. I've taken another case here, which I will first discuss with you and then we'll move on to the graph again to compare. How is f of x minus two graph related to the graph of f of x? So let's find this relation. So what was f of x? f of x we have taken as x plus five. f of x minus two will be x minus two is your input this time, plus five, which will give you x plus three as the functional value. So f of x minus two is the value x plus three. This graph would move towards, if you notice, this graph would move towards the right. How? Let's see. Your graph when x is if if your function is now x plus three the function is x plus three that means your the value when x is zero is three when x is minus three it is uh, uh, y is zero so hence this is the line that you will see and it is moving towards the right so here it will move towards the right so this is a horizontal translation of a graph. Now I also want to take a combination of things and work it out on a graph. If we have the graph of y equals to x squared, how do we obtain the graph of y equals to x squared minus 4x plus 8? Well, we have the graph of y equals to x squared. So we know it's a parabola. We've done that. Now, y equals to x squared minus 4x plus 8. How do we graph it? Let's simplify our lives by 
completing squares. So let's try to convert this to whole square. You have x square minus 4x. In case I could get plus 4 with it, I will have a whole square of x minus 2. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's break this 8 in two parts, 4 plus 4. So which means what do I have? I have x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus 4, which means I have x minus 2 whole square plus 4. x minus 2 whole square plus 4. So that's what your y is. x minus 2. Now, now, now let's talk about this. So the component that you have here is x minus 2. Earlier, we had y equals to f of x. This time, you can see your input is x minus 2. So that is, the translation is x minus 2. We're talking about x minus 2. With x minus 2, what's going to happen? You will have a shift to right because it's a horizontal shift that is happening. It's a horizontal shift that is happening as you have seen here also f of x minus 2. How was it related to the graph of f of x? There was a right shift. We saw that graphically. There was a right shift. That's what's going to happen here also because of x minus 2, you will have a right shift. Because of plus 4, look at this. We have a combination here. We have, say, a times f of x minus b plus say L. Now this plus L means we are talking also about a vertical shift, right? So because of plus four, the graph will shift up. Any guesses? I would like you to pause here and try to graph it yourself. Compare on the same Cartesian plane, compare the graph of x squared and x minus two whole square plus four. So guys, what's going to happen here is that you have a right shift. This, my friends, is the graph of y equals to x squared. And this is the graph of x minus 2 whole square plus 4. There is a right shift. And there is an upward shift as well. Both the shifts are there. So this graph is a combination of horizontal as well as a vertical translation. Yes, you can have such graphs as well. And it's really nice to see this combination that what is happening here, what kind of changes are happening. It's sort of important in terms of building your intuition when it comes to functions, dealing with functions. Graphs are a very good way of, especially graphs of one variable, is a very good way of analyzing a function of one variable. So that's why I wanted to take up this topic. Thank you.